Okay, good morning everybody and welcome to the Ladybug Laboratory Podcast. My name is Lily and I will be your host for today. Today I'm starting a new format. Uh, last episode, episode 29, I talked a lot about how it wasn't working for me the way it was. It just, podcasting became a chore and I wasn't happy with anything that I was putting out and it took me three to five hours to do each episode. And I got a lot of really awesome feedback from you guys, so thank you for that. Um, so I have a lot of new things that I'm gonna be introducing for how this podcast is going to go. So first of all, uh, the biggest change is that I am not going to be covering every project every time. Instead, what I'm going to do is pick a topic and cover a few projects, probably two to five, that fall into that topic. So today's topic is yarn weights. And this is a topic that was suggested by somebody in the YouTube comments, gosh, a couple of episodes ago. I can't remember who it was, but I'll put your name in the down bar. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, and I guess on that topic, uh, bear with me as I work with this new format, but also, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry and all this info is in the down bar. We do have a Ravelry group and in the Ravelry group, uh, there will be threads for the show notes for this episode, as well as um, a thread where you can make suggestions for different topics I might cover. So um, today, a couple of sort of housekeeping things before we get started. Um, first of all, I have some wonky nail polish on. I am, it's only on a few nails, I'm trying out these nail decals, and I put them on, I'm going to see if they work, uh, because usually knitting makes my nail polish and the nail decals come off, but I've heard good things about these from other knitters, so I'm going to leave them on for as long as I can, and we'll see how that goes. Um, so today's topic is yarn weight. And what's going to happen is we're going to have, a, it's basically going to be split in two. First, I'm going to talk about yarn weights, and then I'm going to show you a couple of projects that showcase uh, yarn weights. So, without further ado, let's get started. So let's talk about yarn weight. This is my reference card for today, and this contains samples of different weights of yarn. Now, when we talk about yarn weight, we are basically talking about how thick or thin the yarn is. You can think of it literally as how many yards or meters you can get per gram. So a heavier yarn is going to be a thicker yarn. It's going to be one where there are fewer yards or meters per gram. And a lighter weight yarn or a thinner weight yarn is gonna be thinner. It's gonna be one where there's more yards or meters per gram. Let me give you an example. So many of us are familiar with sock weight yarn. Sock weight yarn is also known as fingering. There are distinctions between those two, but I'm not getting into those right now. And it's pretty thin. It looks something like this. Okay. And you're familiar with it being maybe 400 meters, 450, 60 ish yards for 100 grams, right? Well, Let's talk about this one. This one is DK weight, so it's a little bit thicker. In fact, it's about twice as thick as fingering yarn. And this one is 250 yards for 115 grams. So it's not an exact science, but if you think about it, it's really about half as many yards per gram, right? So this is 500 yards per 230 grams. Um, pretend I did all the math out. Basically, this is half as many yards or meters per gram as this one, okay? So this would be a thicker or a heavier yarn. It's heavier, physically heavier, to get the same amount of yardage or meterage. So when we talk about yarn weights. The problem is that there are some nuances. So your typical yarn weights start about here 
and go to about here, okay? And then these ones on the ends are sort of fringe yarn weights that you're not gonna get very often. So I will start and go all the way through, but understand that the ends, there's some discrepancy as to who thinks is what. So all of these yarns, when I put them in Ravelry, are listed as being this yarn weight. Some of them I would disagree with, and I'll get to those in a minute. So this first one is purple. This is thread weight. Thread weight yarn often comes like this. It's usually sold for crochet. Okay, so this is the thread weight yarn. The next one, this green, is cobweb. So cobweb yarn, honestly to me, feels more like thread. Okay, now this one does have some unique fibers in it, but it's a little bit loftier. And this is something that I would use to knit something very, very fine. Cobweb yarn, cobweb weight yarn will snap. Okay, it's thin, it's very, very thin. So the next one, this blue, is lace weight. And here's some typical lace weight yarn, okay? It's a little thicker than cobweb, but not a whole lot. So let me show you the difference between cobweb and lace weight. See, lace is a little bit thicker. Now those three, often people just refer them to them all as lace weight. They're just different levels of lace weight yarn. That's what I mean when I say that they're fringe. So the next two are considered light fingering and fingering. I like to refer to them more as fingering and sock. Um, sock weight yarn is usually a tiny, tiny bit thicker than typical fingering weight yarn. Now, of course, everything that I'm talking about is in US terminology. And in a minute, I'll talk about um, other regions. But these two here are light fingering in the yellowy orange and fingering in the deep purpley red. Okay, So I'll show you my samples for those. This one is light fingering. And this one is fingering. If you look at the distinction between those two, Again, one of them is very, very slightly thinner than the other. But you can also see that the light fingering is two ply, whereas the normal fingering is a four ply. Okay. So next up is sport. Sport weight yarn is this lighter purple one right here. And I'm going to kind of explain sport in conjunction with DK, which is this blue one. Now, when we talk about international yarns outside, outside of the US, um, often soccer fingering weight yarn is referred to as four ply, and um, DK is literally double knitting. So it's double a sock yarn, essentially. A fingering weight yarn is sort of considered this typical yarn size. So you have sock yarn or fingering yarn, and then DK is double that. Sport is somewhere in the middle. Sport is something that's not usually referred to outside of the US. So I will show you what I have. But remember that it's not very typical if you don't live in the US. So this is my sport weight. And sport weight is somewhere between DK and fingering. So the blue is DK and the purpley one is sport. Okay. So it's a little bit thicker than fingering, uh, but it's not quite as thick as DK. I find it to be a useful um, term when I'm talking about maybe I have a DK weight yarn that's a little bit lighter than a typical DK weight yarn. I'll refer to it as a DK that feels like a sport or something like that. Um, often there's also things like light worsted and worsted and that brings me to the next section on my card where I have this deep red is worsted. Worsted is just a little bit thicker than DK. So this is my worsted sample. And there's also something called light worsted, which 
is, you know, slightly thicker than DK, but a little bit thinner than worsted. When you get into the nuances of this, this is why it's not necessarily an exact science. I have some yarns that are listed as DK, but really are the thickness of sport and stuff like that. And we'll get into that later because there's a lot of different reasons for that. Um, so after worsted, this medium red is Erin. And going back to the international way of thinking about yarn, you have sock or fingering or just basic knitting, DK, which is double knitting, which is double that. And then Erin is double DK. So DK worsted is in the middle and then double of DK is Erin. And this is my Erin sample. I often find that most of my Aran yarns are sort of more rustic. A lot of rustic yarns come in Aran weight. Okay. After Aran, you get into the top side of this, which has bulky, super bulky, and jumbo. How exactly you define those, it's kind of the same as thread, cobweb, and lace weight. Bulky, super bulky, and jumbo are kind of everything else on that side of the spectrum. So this is my bulky sample. It's a little bit thicker than Erin. This is super bulky. Often the difference between bulky and super bulky is that super bulky will puff up a little bit more. And then jumbo, I actually don't have any left. But what I do have is if you guys stuck around for when I was wake, making my brother-in-law thrummed booties, the thrums were jumbo. So see how those are so much thicker? Yeah, this is pretty much roving. Okay, it's not a great yarn. Jumbo yarns are often novelty yarns. They're difficult to make an actual project out of. Um, I'm going to pause because my phone is running out of charge and I will go get the cable and then I will keep going. Okay, so we've talked about yarn weights as literally being how many yards or meters you can get per gram. And that is why it's referred to as a weight. However, that's not the only way of talking about it. So the other most common way of talking about yarn weight is wraps per inch. And this is a little tool that I got at the Black Squirrel that is a great tool if you're a spinner and you are trying to figure out the weight of your yarn. This is a great tool to use. And it literally has an inch cut out in the middle. And what you do is you take your yarn. This is just a little sample of an Aran weight from a project that I did a long time ago. You literally wrap your yarn into this spot. Okay. So you don't want to pull it super tight. The goal of this is not to stretch out your yarn. You're not trying to block it by force. You're just sort of gently wrapping it and lining up each one. You want it to be taut, but not tight. Ugh, I messed up. And something you don't want to do is, you know, get here and then be like, oops, and smush them. Because they're going to smush closer together than they actually should be. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this, and then I will show you guys what it looks like afterward. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And as you can tell, it's snug. Across the top, they are flush with each other. Okay. They're not bowing out. Often if you smush them in here too much, the rows will bow out. This should stay about an inch all the way down. That shows you that you really have lined it up appropriately instead of smushing too much into here and then having it expand. Um, it's not all smushed together. It's not all spread out. There's no huge gaps. There's a little bit, right? But that's because this is an imperfect yarn. It's not going to line up perfectly. Okay. Um, there are nuances to the yarn that you can see where the yarn kind of is a little bit janky. It's a rustic wool. So what I have here is this is wrapped and there are two, four, six, eight. There are eight strands of this yarn. So what you would do is you would look at your chart and you would see how many wraps per inch it is. So this is eight. So eight wraps per inch is Aran. So this is Aran weight. Okay. If I read this over to you, um, remember how I said that anything below fingering, there's all these new 
sort of, it's a little bit unper imperfect, and everything above Aaron is a little bit imperfect. Well, this one says bulky is five to six wraps per inch. Chunky is seven wraps per inch, and then Aaron is eight. Um, chunky is one of those ones that's kind of thrown in there. Sometimes it means bulky, and bulky means super bulky. Uh, Any time that you get sort of above Aaron or below fingering, look specifically at the yardage per gram and the, um, or the wraps per inch. And that will help you get a better idea for what the yarn actually is. If you are doing a project that calls for bulky weight yarn, often it will have a suggested yarn. Look up the suggested yarn and find what is the um, yards or meters per gram and what is the wraps per inch of that yarn. I would look a little bit more closely at wraps per inch than yards per gram and I'll talk about why in a minute. But this is a great tool. So it has bulky is five to six, chunky is seven, Aaron is eight, worsted is nine, DK is 11, sport as 12, fingering is 14, and lace as 16 to 18. So again, they don't get into thread or cobweb, they just have lace. So this is a great tool if you're often dealing with mystery yarns or you're a spinner or anything like that. All right, a minute ago I said wraps per inch can be more reliable than yards per gram. And here's why. Different fibers weigh different amounts. So wool is going to weigh differently than linen. So let me give you an example. These two are both technically DK weight yarns. Right? This one is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. This one is 50% linen, 50% hemp, cotton. I'll put it in the down bar. They're both technically DK, right? Because they have really very similar yards or meters per gram. But if you look at the difference between those two, you can see that the one that's made of linen is definitely thinner. That's what I would call more of a sport weight, okay? It has a heft to it, okay? This weighs more, but linen sort of works up a little bit stringier, right? And so it's heavy, but it's, and it's not as stretchy because of the nature of the fiber. Um, and so it's heavy, but it's steadfast, whereas this one is stretchier, okay? And so if I stretched this, it would probably get down to about this, but that's not how wool works. Wool is going to pull itself back up. Linen will not. And so when you're trying to substitute yarn for a pattern and you're looking at the weights of yarn, the easiest thing to do is look at the suggested yarn and look at the fiber content and find something with a similar fiber content. Then you can look at the yards per gram or meters per gram, and you can also take a look at the wraps per inch, and that will give you a good idea too. But if you are substituting for a pattern, often the look of the pattern will change based on what fiber you make it in. Linen socks are very different than wool socks. As any of you with a wool allergy know, um, fibers behave differently. Silk is going to behave differently than wool. And so if you're asking about fiber weights in order to substitute yarn, sorry, I was getting in my face, then I would really look into the fiber content as well. But as a general rule of thumb, this is your guide to yarn weight. I'm going to be taking a picture of this and posting it in the show notes in Ravelry. Um, and I will also have little comments on everything that I said. I will list out the yarn types, wraps per inch, etc. Um, in general, Ravelry is a very good tool. Often they have yarns in there that, for instance, once you put it in Ravelry, you put the yards and the weight and blah, 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 blah. And the wraps per inch and it will have a little notification that comes up that says this yarn on the tag is listed as being 
worsted. But according to Ravelry's calculations, it is actually Aerith, for instance. Red Heart yarn is like that. It's listed as being worsted, but Ravelry calls it Erin. And that's because it is thicker than a worsted weight yarn. It's, it's definitely a heavy worsted. It works more like an Erin does. Of course, it's acrylic, so it doesn't feel like a lot of Erin yarns because Erins are often rustic. But, and you'll see that right there, I just use the term heavy worsted. So when you think, you hear those a lot, you hear light worsted, heavy worsted, light fingering, heavy fingering. Something like that is basically, if it's lighter, it's a little bit thinner, right? Because it's not, it doesn't weigh quite as much per yard or gram. If it's heavier, it's a little bit thicker because it weighs a little bit more. I'm sorry, per yard or meter, not per yard or gram, right? And so when people talk about this, often they'll say I'm using a worsted weight yarn, but it's a bit more of a light worsted. Maybe that means it feels, it works like a DK weight, okay? Or something like that. Um, yarn weights are something that it takes a while to get used to. After a while, you're able to just sort of look at a yarn and say, oh, that's probably X. And what I tried to do with this is, I mean, I had a lot of yarns in my stash that fell into most of these categories, obviously not all of them. What I tried to do is take what I thought was the most typical um, from my stash. And I also tried to keep the colors similar, which I didn't necessarily succeed at because sometimes I didn't have that color in that particular weight. But they're all, for the most part, solid. So, yeah. Um, I don't know that I have much else to say about yarn weight. So for today's projects, I'm going to be showing you guys projects that I have done with thicker weight yarn, heavier weight yarn. So basically everything from this side on up, right? And without further ado, let's move on to some projects. Okay, so I have four projects to show you today. Two works in progress, two finished objects, and they are, one of them is Erin, no, excuse me. One is DK, one is worsted, one is Erin, and one is bulky. So I'm actually, instead of going finished objects, works in progress, or vice versa, I'm gonna go in order of their weight. So let's start with the DK. Right now I have two DK works in progress, but one of them contains linen. And so as I mentioned before, it feels often, when it contains linen, more like a sport weight. So I'm not going to show that one to you guys because for me a lot of the question of the yarn weight is what weather can I wear it in and linen is cooler and it's a lighter weight so that's definitely more of a late spring early autumn project for me. These four that I'm going to show you are all winter projects. So this first one is living in my used so and so bag. It's in DK weight. And I have a little Powell's Books pin, maybe, maybe, maybe not. It has a unicorn on it. And inside of this is my Eason shawl. There's a picture. It's by Susanna I.C. And I am actually using this blue yarn that I use as my DK weight sample. So this is Swanky DK um, by Magpie in the Masquerade colorway. As I mentioned, it's 801010 Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon. So this is what I have so far. Now, as you can see, I have just come to the top of these pleats. Okay, this is a shawl, but it is bottom up shawl. So often shawls start at the top and work their way down. In this case, this is bottom up, which means it had an 864 stitch cast on, which is insane. <laughs> um, but it also meant I got about an inch of the way in and this thing uses four or five. I can't remember. Either four or five skeins of the yarn. 
I got about an inch of the way in and it had already finished the first skein. So it's one of those things where, yeah, it seems like it's taking forever, but it actually takes less and less time as you go, as opposed to a normal shawl, which takes more and more. So somewhere on here is a progress keeper. And the last time that you saw it, here it is. So the last time you saw this was quite a while ago. And I was down here. I had done about, gosh, I don't know, three quarters of an inch, which is maybe two centimeters. And now I am all the way up here. I've used at least another two skeins of yarn. I don't have as many stitch markers on here as I used to. I used to have a lot of stitch markers. Um, but most of them are kind of generic. I have a set of kitty stitch markers from Katrinkles. And they're all different. I have this flower which came with a project that I'm working on. And I have cleverly disguised as a responsible adult. No, there we go. From Carolyn Mack of the Next Beautiful Thing podcast. I miss you, Carolyn. I know you're not watching this because your life is crazy right now, but I miss you. Um, yeah. So this is something that I am making for to be a wrap in the winter when I go back to visit my family in New England. And it's probably not something I'm going to work on for a while because if you look at the pattern, see after the pleats we get to this section with the beads. I cannot find beads. I, I can't. I can't find beads. Um, I've been looking up and down everywhere I can think of and I cannot find them. And it is very frustrating. <laughs> Um, if you know of anywhere to get 4mm glass Megatama beads, let me know. <sighs> I'm very frustrated. But, yeah, so that's that. Uh, the next project to talk about is in a worsted weight, and this one is a finished object. You haven't seen this one at all. And, again, this is something for the winter. This is something for when I go back to visit my family over Christmas in New England. And this is the Back East Shawl. Uh, that is the pattern. It is by, oh my goodness, Webster Street Knittery. Is that right? I think that's right. I will put it in the down bar if that's not right. They had a trunk show at the Black Squirrel, and I saw this shawl, and I thought the pattern was really lovely, but what really grabbed me was the name. And the name was the Back East Wrap, and you know me, I always talk about going back east to my family and the actual weather, <laughs> and um, so I had to make it, and I named it Boston Bound. This is my Boston Bound shawl. And this is using a worsted weight. I absolutely love it. I love the way it fits. Just sort of drapes. It is a slight... Ooh. It is a slightly um, asymmetric triangular shawl. And the construction is really cool. You do the center. This is all listed on the Reveler page, so I'm not giving too much away. But you... Do the center section and then you pick up and do the border and I'm really really happy with it um, so the red in this one is also the sample that I used for worsted and I also used the white and the white has little tones and flecks of like brown and red but you will notice this white is a little bit more white than that white that is because I it bled when I tried, went to block it. I used warm water because I'm an idiot and it bled. And so the, the contrast is not as good as it originally was. I mean, look at this. Look at the difference here. Like, ugh. I'm just, it's, I'm so frustrated. Like, right there, you can see how pink it is. Like, right there. I am so frustrated. I was so happy with this. I actually cried. I mean, I know it's ridiculous, but my life was crazy at that 
time and I wanted to punch everything and the only thing that was making me happy was this shawl and then it got ruined and I just cried and then I got over it but yeah I mean I, it's still beautiful I spent a while with dish soap trying to scrub it out so okay so initially what happened is I blocked this in the same bucket as something with lots of blue yarn in fact it was my dice bag I mentioned last episode how that one bled onto the the sequin yarn bled onto the oh my god the lining it also bled onto this so I had these blue splotches on this so then I took dish soap and tried to wash the blue spl splotches out, which kind of worked, but then the red started bleeding. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oops. So, like, this section is where it's most pronounced, and you can't even really see it on the camera, but, like, this one is really the color it's supposed to be. This is a lot more pink. So, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's still lovely, it's still squishy, it makes me happy inside. And I will still wear it, and no one is going to know except me, but I know, and it bothers me. But, yeah, I have all of these, um, gosh, progress keepers in there, marking the places where it's still pink for me to go back. But I don't know if I will go back and try and scrub it again. I might just leave it. But whenever I'm done, whenever it's dried and I am done with it, it is going to go in this box. This is a box that I got at Joann's. And it says, you know, laugh, follow your dreams, inspire. It's a little bit kitschy, but I really liked it. Um, and, you know, people talk about box of socks. And I find that I don't want to open my socks at the beginning of the new year. I want to open them right before I go back to Boston for Christmas every year. And so that's what I decided to do. I decided to make myself a box of all of the winter knits that I make myself. And this is going to go in there and this is going to be fresh and nice and warm and clean. And when I pack, I get to open the box and pull out all of my knits and I'm excited for that. I'm really excited for that. So, uh, except for shorty socks, as I finish socks and shawls and sweaters, they're going to go in there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm glad I got the box. So that is my worsted weight project. The next one is Erin weight. And this one is a little bit interesting because it is both Erin and worsted. This is my blanket for my Auntie D, And I will put a picture in Last time you saw it, it was basically done, but I had to add the border. I finally went in and added the border. And I wanted to talk about this one because this is a really good example of different weights of yarn. And so most of the yarn in this is Aran weight yarn, but a lot of it is listed as worsted because a lot of acrylic yarns are listed as worsted. So this one was one of the yarns that I used the most of. And for those of you that don't know the story, um, the short version is a few years ago, my Auntie Dee sent me all of this old acrylic yarn from someone in her family that had passed away with this lovely note about how wonderful it was to have somebody who would use it. And I shoved it in the back of my closet. <laughs> and in February, her life a lot of things happened. Several people died, her husband lost his job, blah, 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 whatever. So I said, okay, I need to make something out of that yarn for her, which had been my plan the whole time. And I opened it up and there were hexagons pre-made in the package that her relative had already made. And so I made a bunch more hexagons. I turned them into a blanket. There are little safety pins on all of the original hexagons for her. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm really, she really loved it, so that's what matters. But a lot of the original hexagons were made in a yarn that was this color. And it was an acrylic weight yarn, or an acrylic listed as worsted, definitely Aran weight yarn. 
And then there was this one, which is also acrylic and listed as worsted and is actually worsted. So I tried to make some hexagons out of this one and they ended up smaller. Even though I used the same hook size because, and I ran out of the one of this color that was Aaron, but I'll use this one because it's the same yarn. So here we go. The darker one is actually worsted and the lighter one is definitely Aaron. You can see the difference there. And so what happens is as I'm doing the stitch with the crochet hook, I will make the stitch and the thickness of the yarn will force it to sort of pull, like if any of you have ever crocheted, you know that you pull and you have to pull it up to a certain amount where there's a loop to go through and etc. So if I'm doing a double crochet in an Aran weight yarn, I have to pull farther to get a big, the same size loop because the yarn is thicker. And so the stitches end up being bigger. And if you've ever tried to, you know, knit um, a worsted weight pattern with fingering weight yarn on the original needle sizes, you know how the stitches are like loose. That was kind of the same effect I was getting. And I had to go up a hook size to get kind of the right. Um, size so that it would match but they still looked like a little bit empty almost they definitely they were lighter because it's a lighter weight yarn so yeah but I finished that I'll put a picture of it in here um I'm I'm really happy with it I really am so yeah and and Auntie Dee's happy with it so that's what's important right sent it off she got it I I waited to send it until just after I got back from my trip because she was moving at, during all of this as well. And I didn't want to send it to her before she moved, so I waited, but yeah, so she's moved now, she's in her new place and she has it. So yeah, that is my third project, which is Erin with a little bit of worsted. And my final project is actually in super bulky, not bulky, and it is also in my super bulky weight sample yarn. And that is a blanket that I am making, and it is called the Whirling Wildflower. It is by 10, hour, er, 10 Hours or Less, which is, theoretically, they're supposed to be simple projects. And they are, but they don't take 10 hours usually. So this is a baby blanket, and I am using Knit Picks Dapple which is a single ply, super bulky, um, and let me give you an example. It's 65 yards to 100, 100 grams. So compare that to 450 or 60 yards in a fingering weight to 100 grams. So this is a physically heavy blanket, okay? Um, I am doing, it has basic brioche. It's a brioche blanket and it's pretty big right now. It's all crammed up on my needles. Eventually it will be a circular blanket and I will seam up the other side. But let's see, last time you saw this. So this is so thick that I know there's a progress keeper in here, but I can't see it at all on this entire side of the blanket, which means it's probably on the other side. There it is. Didn't even go through to the other side of the blanket. So here we go. This is where I was last. So about halfway in terms of length, but maybe about a third of the actual knitting because I've been increasing pretty steadily. This progress keeper is a little star that I got for completing Bingo My God. Um, I absolutely love this color. This is far more accurate color-wise than that. This is the more accurate one. A little bit of a brighter, see, you know, it's there. Brighter green, brighter foresty green. Um, I'm really happy with this. It's thick and smooshy. Um, as a bulky weight blanket should be. It's, I mean, my hand is under there. It's maybe a centimeter to a centimeter and a half 
thick. Like from the top of one brioche to the top of the other. It's about a centimeter inside the brioche. Um, yeah, I love this. I don't know if technically this is considered fisherman's rib. I think, I mean, it's listed as being brioche. So I, I think it's brioche. Um, I'm not going to be working on this for a long time because it's bulky weight. It's a blanket. It sits on my lap. It is the summer. No, just no. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to be picking this up again, probably until October at least. Um, what's interesting is I'm very close to finishing this repeat. And then I have to decide, the short version is, I don't remember the exact numbers, but I'm like 60% of the way through the yarn and I have to move on to do the petals, right? And so I'm currently like 60% of the way through the yarn and 70% of the way through the knitting or something like that. And if I do one more repeat, I can make it a little bit bigger, do the petals a little bit wider. And I would be like 72% of the way through the yarn and 70% of the way through the knitting. And it's like, well, can I make it? Do I want to just make it smaller and then have a lot of leftover yarn? Do I want to play some serious yarn chicken? Maybe I make myself a hat out of the extras. But am I really ever going to use the extras? Maybe it's better to just order one more skein if I need to. I don't know. <laughs> Any thoughts on that would be appreciated because I have no idea exactly what to do with that. <laughs> so um, this is living in my nevertheless she knitted tote bag because it is too big for a normal project bag at this point, which contains three stitches pins on it. Um, yeah, that's about all I have to say about that. So, obviously I am not updating you on all of my projects. Uh, there are a lot more that I've been working on that you're not going to see. And I don't know when you're going to see them. If you are interested in keeping up with my knitting on a more timely basis, uh, follow me on Instagram. That's where a lot of that is going to be. I'm not going to be doing every single project every single time. This is going to be it. That's it. That's what I did for today. Uh, I am wearing my Druidry top. Um, yeah. And uh, so yeah, that's, that's it for today. Yarn weights and then heavyweight projects. So thank you guys for stopping by. Thank you for all of your wonderful feedback on my last episode. I really appreciate it. I'm hoping this is a better format for me. I'm... I've been thinking about this for a couple of weeks now, and I'm actually excited to podcast again. And I kept feeling like there were all these things that I wanted to do, but I was already, you know, two hours worth of podcasting, and I was just going over the projects, and I don't have time to do that all the, t you know, every week, and then add the things I want to do. And so doing this, it kind of gives me permission to just focus on what I want to focus on, pick a topic and do that. And not worry about constantly keeping up with all of the projects. I don't feel like there's all these things that I have to do before I can even get to my topics. So yeah, and a lot of people said they really liked the details about the projects. Um, so I mean, everything that I have here, I've so far knit as written. Um, and I've given a lot of detail about the blanket already. So I'm not going to go too much into that. But yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this. Let me know what you think of this new format. If you have any thoughts, suggestions, uh, keep it kind, but suggestions are welcome. Um, yeah. So have a great day, everybody. Um, happy crafting, happy knitting, happy whatever, and I'll see you next time.